Welcome back. By now, the whole world knows the name and the epic ordeal of Brittany Griner. But tonight, at least three other Americans are locked up in Russian prisons with uncertain prospects at best. One is Sarah Krivenek. We first brought you her story last month, and we are determined to stay on it. Sarah landed in trouble last November when her Russian boyfriend attacked her. You heard that right. The boyfriend attacked Sarah. Sarah fought back, nicking his nose with a knife, but she was the one who ended up being charged despite being covered in bruises and having several broken fingers. Sarah uh, was out on bail when the U.S. Embassy came to her aid, or at least so she thought. They helped her arrange a flight to the U.S. They even escorted her to the Moscow airport where she was re-arrested because she was out on bail and not allowed to leave the country. It's unbelievable, and it's not getting the coverage it deserves. That was December, and a Russian court sentenced Krivenek to 15 months. When we brought you her story this summer, uh, her friends, they were desperate to hear from her, and now they have. And they are frantically worried tonight. People magazine has obtained a handwritten letter. Krivenek was allowed uh, to write to a Russian contact. The road has been very hard, she writes. My health has grown worse. There are no vitamins here and no good medical care. I have absolutely nothing. But scariest of all is what Krivenek did not write. When I get home, she says, I will tell you everything. I can't do that in a letter. We do know from relatives and her Russian lawyer that Krivenek suffers from kidney disease, which is potentially deadly if not treated, and that she is clearly in danger right now. So where is the U.S. Embassy? Where is the U.S. government? Why don't we hear about this American teacher jailed? Where is the outrage from civilized nations everywhere? That's what my next guest wants to know. After a break, we'll speak again with an American friend of Sarah's who is fighting a very lonely battle right now to save her friend's life and bring her back home. I want to welcome back to the program now Anita Martinez. She's a friend of Sarah Krivenek, who has been jailed in Russia since December of last year. Um, Anita, thank you so much for coming back on with us. Um, I think it's been a little over a month since I last spoke to you. We wanted to have you back on when there was an update. Uh, unfortunately, this is not great news. Uh, t tell me, how did you hear about this letter, and what do we know new tonight? Well, um, we had to have a friend of a friend who lives in Moscow send a letter to Sarah through their the prison web website, and um, she responded to that letter, and that's how we got the the response from her and the letter that we received from her, explaining and, you know as much as she could, anyways. Yeah, one thing that I found the most startling was that she made a point to say that there were things that she couldn't say or write the correspondence in and out of the prisons to my my understanding is that it's heavily monitored so um she can't that's why i'm i'm just so worried about her because i just feel like she's not able to tell us exactly how severe she is or her health is um so i don't know and then i mean i was happy that she's alive because i didn't even know that you know i didn't know what was happening with her. Um, but now this is a new concern that we have. Yeah, we reached out to her. She's got this lawyer in Russia um, who, who uh, one of our producers has been reaching out through WhatsApp. Uh, we haven't been able to get in touch with the lawyer, try to get a copy of the letter, learn a little more. What, what do you know of what's in the letter? I mean, can you give us a little more detail? I mean, what she's going through, what she described? Um, well, basically, like, you know, what you stated earlier is that she has absolutely nothing. Um, they rely on outside sources, family and friends to send them um, supplies that, that are needed because the prison gives them nothing. It's, you know, my understanding that they give them a uniform and basic food and that's it. Um, everything else is they depend on family and friends. but. The problem is that with the sanctions that are in place in Russia right now, we're not able to send anything because they can't have any currency or anything from outside countries. So um, one thing I'd like to add is that we did get in contact with some humanitarian human rights and um, charitable organizations. And it's my understanding that as tomorrow, they're going to be going out to visit Sarah and take her supplies. We compiled a list of things that she requested 
In addition, we added um, a co warm clothing because it's getting cold over there now. It's you know winter time for them. And yeah. um, Sarah won't survive. She won't survive. I mean, look at that picture. You know, look at the snow. Look at it's. She will not survive if she's sick. Um, she won't survive this winter and she won't survive the, the remainder of her sentence. And that's my concern. Yeah. So she... as of tomorrow, they're supposed to go out. Yeah, they're that's... supposed to go out and deliver supplies to her. So that, that's great news that, that they're going to be able to be on the yeah. ground there with her. And, and for people watching this thinking, like when you're saying she won't survive the winter and they're thinking it's a jail, this isn't a normal jail. She's apparently at this work camp. Um, so she mm -hmm. probably needs warm clothing. And, and it's interesting in the letter, um, she, she said she needs fruit, vegetables, sugar, coffee, shampoo, washing powder, and then meat and cigarettes, which apparently are used for currency um, w within the, the jail. But again, it's like we're thinking of jails here. I mean, she, she just needs like food even in, in this awful place where she is. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you recall the interview that um, the Marine... Um, Oh my God, Trevor Reed, I believe was his name, yeah. who was incarcerated there. Uh, he gave an interview to CNN and he basically explained it, that the food is basically water, fish soup, um, things like that. Very basic, very basic. They don't give um, a whole lot of food. And again, like I said, I, I've been told that they rely mostly on outside sources, on their you know family and friends to send things through the website. But we can't do that from here. I mean, do you think, so, based on what you know, is she malnourished right now? I believe, to a point, yes. I believe so. So nothing um, against, nothing she against... Has a Sorry, go ahead. I don't want to interrupt go you. Go ahead, Anita. Uh, no, well, she's had this kidney issue all along. Even when she was here, she suffered from it, but it was under control. But she was also, you know, nourished and was able to receive the supplements and whatever she needed here um, and even prior to her incarceration. But now she has nothing. She has nothing. She has access to nothing. Uh, we can't send her anything. And, you know, like you said, it was just luckily that we were able to get in contact with the humanitarian people and human rights activists and, and so forth that were willing to help us. And, um, you know, God willing, they'll be able to get out there to her tomorrow and deliver her some supplies. and. Yeah, it no, seems like a legitimate a legitimate concern at this point that she may not make it to the end of her sentence if something's not done. Right. That's what I'm afraid of. So uh, nothing against uh, Brittany Griner. Obviously, she's in a terrible situation, too, and these other high-profile Americans who have been jailed in Russia. Um, like, I get it. People are working on their behalf. But I've struggled with this since the first time we spoke to you. I don't understand why... Sarah's story doesn't get any attention. I mean, American teacher, the domestic violence angle, she was set up, I mean, I hate to say set up, but I mean, the US Embassy bought her the ticket and told her to go to the airport, and that's when she got arrested. Like, why is this not getting more attention? Have you been able to wrap your mind around that, Anita? I haven't, and I, you know, at this point, I don't even know if we'll ever get the answer to that. Um, I'm just hoping that now, um, they do something to help get her home before it's too late. I just hope that, you know, when she is able to come home, um, I know she just has a few months left on her sentence, but depending on the severity of what she's dealing with right now, I don't know if she has a few months left, period. Yeah, I think that's the, the I mean, this is, this is more urgent than last time we spoke. Um, I want to read you what right. she wrote towards yeah. the end of the letter. She said, um, tell everyone that I am always with them and I never stop thinking about you all. You are in my heart. With God's help, I shall soon be home. Um, I send you all hugs and kisses. I, I just can't even imagine what, I mean, there's gotta be some, some relief um, that she's alive, but I can't even imagine what it's like for you, you know, reading this. Yeah, it was hard. Um, I was happy that she responded, obviously. I was happy that, you know, she's alive and she's, considering everything she's been through, she's doing well. But, um, you know, I'm just really concerned about her health. What um, do you... She's just... 
Just one last thing. I was thinking about this earlier when we were trying to get in touch with this Russian lawyer that's allegedly helping her, and this is where the, the letter came from. I mean, what do you make of this? It's, it's sort of hard to trust anyone over there right now. I mean, thank goodness there's the humanitarian group that, that you're talking about that's going to go out there tomorrow. But what, what do you make of this lawyer? Well, let me clarify. This letter did not come from her lawyer. Okay. This letter came from an outside source an outside source that we um, had sent, he wrote to her through the prison website, is it had to be somebody from Moscow. We, it obviously, you know, correspondence and currency and all that from outside of the countries are not allowed right now. So it had to be somebody within uh, Moscow. And mm. they wrote to her through the, the prison website. And she responded there. That's how the letter came. Okay. This current letter came to be. Well, um, at least we... I did make contact with her attorney. I did make contact with her attorney. And um, she said that she hasn't seen Sarah since she was in the detention center. Oh. And her only communication with Sarah is when on occasion when Sarah calls her. Um, and she said that the last time she spoke with her had been, uh, you know, about three, four weeks ago. Well, at um, least we Sarah have is. we have at least we have an update now. Um, something we can do in the media is continue to cover the story, spread awareness, um, and we are going to continue to do that. So please keep us posted, Anita, with any new updates you get because you you're getting the updates first. It seems hopefully we'll be able to get in touch with that lawyer yeah. soon. Um, thanks so th thanks Thank so much you, for. Uh, yeah, Google Translate. I Thank mean, I, right. Because I've been writing a lot of Russian. Yeah, I mean, people think State Department and stuff, but we're here like today texting through WhatsApp trying to get in touch with this lawyer. It doesn't seem like anyone is doing anything, but we'll stay on it. Okay. Thank you, Anita. Thank you. Um, Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.